America's Voice Live, good to have you here. Uh, Wednesday, President Trump traveled to the United States-Mexico border to see for himself the crisis that is ongoing there. He also held a roundtable of local law enforcement and officials about border security, joined by Texas Governor Greg Abbott and a dozen House Republicans as well. One of those on hands is my next guest, a congressman from Louisiana. Let's head out onto the hill. I have Louisiana Congressman Mike Johnson here with me today. Uh, congressman, good to see you again. Good to have you back. Um, Absolutely. Let's talk Great about, to see you as well. Let's talk about what happened there in Texas. Obviously, there is a crisis at the border. We have 22,000, give or take, minors in custody of the United States government. More than 150,000 people crossed the border illegally just last month. You have a situation where you've got human trafficking, drug trafficking, uh, crimes, criminal activity. It needs to stop. It's out of control. But yet the Biden administration continues to, I, I suppose, uh, fiddle while Rome burns. What do you make of it? Uh, that's how we would describe it. And, of course, we went down, as you mentioned yesterday, with the president. President Trump was there, Governor Abbott and more than a dozen House members, House Republicans, members of the Republican Study Committee, because we wanted to see the current status ourselves with our own eyes so we could be, bring it back to our districts and report that. The American people need to know what is going on here, and much of the mainstream media is completely ignoring this crisis. It, it is a tragedy that affects every single American, and as we've become accustomed to saying now, every state is a border state. Because, Steve, they're taking people uh, into this country with this completely open border down there. We were down in La Jolla, South Texas, 750 miles south of where Kamala Harris did her photo op, where the real ground zero is. And I'm telling you, we watch people come over in droves. We were there as late as 1.30 in the morning. It never stops. It's a humanitarian crisis, and it affects every single person in this country, ultimately. It certainly does. You know, every state's a border state, but some states are in closer proximity. Louisiana, for example right there where well, you must have all the spillover that comes in from texas it slops into louisiana then into arkansas and elsewhere so it is more uh, devastating to states that are in proximity to the border than others wouldn't you say it is but i'll tell you what we observe there is that the migrants that are coming over are not trying to run from or be evading uh, evasive uh, they're looking for border patrol agents you know why because the Biden administration executive orders, the president's executive orders say they cannot detain or deter or stop them. All they're doing really is acting as processing agents now for the cartels that are trafficking people across the border. It is, it is incredible. They come in, they look for the Border Patrol agents who take them to a processing center and what they're doing for many of these groups is giving them plane tickets and, 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 and train tickets and sending them out throughout the, 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 the country with no real expectation, of course, that they'll ever return for processing for asylum or any other claim they have. Everyone needs to know, this. the volume of this is the highest it's been in over 20 years, 180,000 in the month of May alone. It goes up now exponentially because the word is out to everybody in the world, come on in, it's a welcome mat. President Biden wants you here. We want to put you on the, the, the taxpayer's dole here. That's what's happening. You, you know, Congressman, I keep hearing that it's the worst it's been in 20 years or 25 years, but honestly... I don't remember a time in my lifetime that 150,000 people are coming across the border illegally, maybe more because nobody's really sure what the number is, are they? I mean, you have all these gotaways, as they call it, plus the ones that turn themselves into a border agent, plus the ones that are coming across and, and being detained and, and everything else. Um, we have a million plus people coming to America legally every year. If we have a million and a half or two million, possibly based on these numbers coming in this year, at some point, it's just too much. And we need to get it under control, do we not? It's be beyond the point of being too much. And you, you make a great point. We really don't know how many people in total have come across. We say it's the worst in 20 years because there were periods uh, over, the, over previous decades where there would be one month where there was a surge for one reason or another. This is a sustained surge. This is the last three months that we've had 170, 180,000 people each. And as you point out, Steve, that's just the, uh, the apprehensions or the encounters at the border, as we call it. Um, that, that we don't know how many people came through that we never have a counting of. And, and there are so many holes in that porous border, border that we see them coming across at all points. And so there's no telling. And we don't know how many those with, with the, you know, terrorists, dangerous people, MS-13 gang members. We have fentanyl coming over. 734 pounds of fentanyl was, uh, was, was collected by Border Patrol in May alone. Fentanyl is, a, is, is one of the most dangerous substances on the planet. We can kill every American. And I want to touch on something there. 
because I heard something. I learned something yesterday listening to the president. You might have as well. I didn't realize, and he pointed out, had to point it out twice to some of the law enforcement that were present there with you yesterday. He said the fentanyl comes from China, and they said, no, it comes across the border in Mexico. He's, it comes across the border in Mexico, but it's manufactured in China. I didn't realize that. I learned that yesterday. That is a troubling fact. Well, of course, and it, and it, it is claiming the lives of innocent people. You know, people go to buy painkillers on the street, and it's laced with this stuff, and, and it's killing American citizens. And much of this is being underreported right now. And, and the, the human trafficking toll alone is shocking. It, when we were there, our colleagues came across unaccompanied minors. I'm talking about six-year-old children left alone on the border in the middle of the night. I mean, it, it, no telling what's happened to them on, on the trail to get there. You know, the, the cartels are, are making huge amounts of money, and they're doing it at the expense of the American people. Our safety is at risk. Our security is at risk. Our sovereignty is at risk, because if you don't have a stable border, at the end of the day, you really don't have a country. And President uh, Trump right. pointed that out so well. You know, the, 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 the border, yeah. uh, the, the fence that's there could be completed, but Biden stopped it, and that is the bottom line. Now, I see some states like South Dakota sending uh, a few dozen members of their National Guard to the southern border, Florida sending some law enforcement people to help out as well. Uh, but the real question here, based on what you said here, Congressman, is who is in charge of the southern border right now? Is it the United States government? Is it the Mexican government? Or is it in large part the drug cartels doing all of their illegal activity, being human trafficking and drug trafficking and illegal arms and goods and everything back and forth? Who's really in charge? They're having the cartels are having their way there. Uh, in the middle of the night, we were picking up these uh, these used plastic armbands that were in the mud there. And, and uh, the Border Patrol agents that were escorting us around said, oh, those are the cartels paraphernalia. What they do is they tag the people and there's a symbol on it whether or not they paid yet. Those who don't pay when they get across the border are committed to be indentured servants for the cartels. They know where their families are back in their home countries and they'll, they'll kill their families if they don't serve them. So, I mean, the, the magnitude of this is almost unimaginable and it is, a, it is a shame that the Democrats in Congress will not acknowledge it, the Biden administration won't help us fix it, and the mainstream media is trying to uh, make sure that no one sees it. And, and so we have to go down there and continue to, to, to raise the alarm and let people know this is not, this should not be a partisan issue. This is about all of us as Americans. Let me ask you something else that I don't think a lot of people talk about, but has become um, painfully evident to the people that live along the border, and that is the environmental destruction of all of these people coming across the border illegally. The Green New Dealers would have you believe that global warming is a big threat to the environment, and yet, You've got a fragile ecosystem down there being stomped on, backpacks and clothing and garbage strewn across this uh, arid southwestern part of the United States, doing tremendous damage to the environment, to those ecosystems. Why does nobody ever talk about that price? That's a great point. I mean, to say that the that area down there that, that we were in is, is trashed is an understatement. Um, there, there's no monitoring of that at all, and, and certainly not, not a lot of reporting on that aspect of it. But it, it just goes to show, Steve, in every category, this, this is a, trage a tragedy and a travesty. It's both, because we have a, 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 an administration, we have a, a border czar, the vice president, uh, who's supposedly in charge of this, and they're doing nothing about it. This is an open, open season. They've, they've, they've basically given a welcome mat to the whole world. And people are taking them up on that. And so we have people coming from countries all over the globe going through that porous border at the south. And, and there's no end in sight. Until we, we get the majority in both houses of Congress and we're able to get something through uh, through the White House, this is going to continue unless, unless yeah. the president wakes up one day and sees the light. And I certainly pray that happens soon. Here, here's my last question. We've seen some indication of it already in places like McAllen, Texas and other border towns. Uh, where Republicans are getting elected in places they haven't been elected in decades. Uh, we're seeing Democrat members of Congress openly telling the administration we have a problem here, not just a human humanitarian problem, but a political problem here. Uh, is there going to be a price to pay at the ballot box come next November? I don't think there's, I don't think there's any question about that. I think as we get closer to that 2022 election cycle, the objective facts will speak for themselves. If we continue at the pace we're on right now, by the time we get there, there will be literally millions and millions of illegals that have flooded into the country. The fentanyl numbers will be off the charts, the human trafficking, all of the, 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 the horrible things that go along with this. 
and it will be on everyone's doorstep because again remember they're sending these migrants out into the the country to every state um, they get to pick a place on the map some of those folks and they send them there and and there's no there's no expectation they're going to be adjudicated or, or properly uh, dealt with later so this is going to be a threat to every community ultimately and uh and I, I think there will be a reckoning at the ballot box well and those charity organizations as you know congressman are also cashing into the tune of millions and millions of dollars because as they house these people spread all over the country they get paid quite well to do that that's a conversation for next time congressman uh, Mike Johnson, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Great to be with you.